understanding the sustainability factors of the borrower or the company that they invest in will help them to manage risks, right? So it's transparency. Just because you don't talk about something doesn't mean it's not there, right? So this discussion of sustainability is putting a name to something that's always been there, just nobody was paying attention to it, right? So now... Welcome to ATOX, where sustainability has a voice. Today, we have Alicia Ruby. Alicia is a partner at Atalia Partners, an ESG strategic and financial consultancy in Madrid. She holds the fundamentals of sustainability accounting credential, acts as a subject matter expert for the Value Reporting Foundation, and is co-lead at the FSA Club for Western Europe. Atalia Partner is Spain's foremost independent strategic and financial ESG consultancy in private markets. Alicia advises clients on ESG-informed business strategy, especially regarding the financial materiality of sustainability factors. Alicia has also supported global stakeholder engagement for the Impact Weighted Account Initiative developed at Harvard Business School. Impact Weighted Accounting transparently monetizes a corporation's ESG impacts into financial accounts. Alicia has worked in New York, Madrid, and Sao Paulo. She began her career at Citibank, where she worked for 15 years. She has managed the investments of two large family offices in Spain and was a member of the investment committee of one of Brazil's larger, largest corporate pension funds. She is a member of the executive committee of Level 20 in Spain, a pan-European association dedicated to career success for women in the private equity industry and has served on the boards of both CFA Society Brazil and CFA Society Spain. Welcome, Alicia. Thank you. We're thrilled to have you here. You were with us in a Planet Summit, and we were delighted with your presentation. So I thought, since we're discussing ESG and finance, you will be the perfect person to, to come here with us. So tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you, Andres. <laughs> um, I, as you ex introduced me, I, um, I, I was born in the United States, but I'm the daughter of a Spaniard, so Alicia Rubí, yeah. uh, with a Texas accent. <laughs> uh, I've been living in Madrid for over 30 years. So uh, after starting my career at Citibank in New York, uh, because I am a dual national, I had the opportunity to come with the bank to Madrid, and um, I met my husband and stayed. Uh, I've been working in Spain, as I said, for 30 years. Um, I started my career in, in banking, uh, which is a highly uh, risk management. Uh, all, banks lend money. We get paid to take risk, right? So that I learned uh, my first job that that is is that risk management is the way to make money. So. It's, also the way to avoid losing money, right? So, so I, all of my financial career has been a managing the risk return a, a trade-off, right? Yeah. And um, a, a, three years ago, I, a, I had taken a few years off to raise my family. And a, when I was uh, thinking about what I would like to do when I returned to my career, I focused on sustainability. And the emerging knowledge, a body of knowledge, that helps investors manage sustainability risk, right? So a, 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 a professional investor cannot manage risk without a, a indicators, right? ratios, financial ratios, and in the, in the world of sustainability, we call those key performance indicators of how a company is performing on various sustainability factors. And those factors can be either an opportunity to, uh, to succeed for a business, or it can be a risk that needs to be managed to avoid a, to avoid all the different risks that, 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 that it can lead you into. Yeah, it's super interesting. Uh, in the past 
a talk I was discussing that sustainability is no longer like a satellite like there and it's something like a quite esoteric to say something that that people look and they oversee and they think about it more like this is to show other people what what that I am sustainable now sustainability has merged into the whole corporate like body you know and it's and it's like taking a key position into the executive committees and everything. So uh, St- sustainability is one form of operating performance. And that's a, a, every company has a business and every business has certain sustainability factors, right? And depending what industry you, your company operates in, the sustainability factors that can drive revenues or a, a be a variable in expenses a, or reduce or increase the risk profile of the company, those are going to vary depending on the industry that you work in. But sustainability factors are operational. I love I loved what you said. Sustainability is a way of operating. You know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite powerful because I think Companies should understand that sustainability and financial performing and revenue are not like they're not in a fight. They are directly they are directly related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 there's a lot of times when companies, especially like medium and small businesses, they see sustainability as an expense, and they don't see it as an investment. Right. And, and you know, it's it's interesting. I had a conversation yesterday with a, a company, let's see, it was a, a conversation with a company that wants to borrow money okay. and a, a group of lenders, okay? And a, tr- trying to um, decide how to structure a sustainability-linked loan for this company, all right? So this company is in the advertising industry. Mm-hmm. What sustainability factors could it have, right? So. Uh, the, the quick answer is uh, the obvious ones are uh, it's, it's staff. So the, the, the S in ESG, you, in the advertising industry, you need to have a diverse, a diverse staff will allow you to communicate messages in creative uh, ways that can engage a diverse audience, the widest possible audience, right? So that, that's one example. Another example is how a how it's how it transmits its product right so that if it's using a lot of uh, data centers uh, to create and transmit digital images etc well then uh, data centers are have huge uh, ha- uh, a sustainability footprint. footprints exactly yeah. right so that's the, that we call that the environmental footprint of the hardware that you use uh, then there's governance issues, ethics in advertising, right? So, so but the conversation uh, quickly took a turn towards sustainability advertising, right? Mm-hmm. And we started talking about greenwashing, which is an ethics issue. But the flip side of that is helping companies. This is an advertising agency. It helps co- helping companies communicate. We were talking about this before we went <laughs> live. Communicate transparently. A, the good that they are doing, right? So, a, a, the and so for an advertising agency to start a line of business that is communicating sustainability stories in an ethical way, avoiding greenwashing, this is a new line of business. And the banks loved it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Oh my God, this is super cool. And, and, and also it's, it's like a, a really creative way to see sustainability. And, and I obviously agree with the concept that marketing and advertising companies should, take care, should care a lot about how they communicate this. And this opens like, because I'm always thinking about how you manage your information. So they should be able to, to confirm that the information that they are communicating is actually true. Because one of the things, especially for example for us, when we try to communicate what we do at A Planet, we see okay, but this is backed by information, by data, and when when it isn't, we just say well, okay, we can't communicate this because mm-hmm. this is not this isn't something that can stand. Um, w- w- 
we were saying this before, like um, revision um, analysis and analysis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- this, this is, yeah, perfect. Okay, so we were we were going slowly into the the subject of the, of this conversation, and I wanted to ask you, and I want you to tell like our audience. How sustainability is merging into finance, and why should we care? I mean, you, you already talked a bit about this, but but I think the story and the background and everything that's right. behind is super interesting. So I mentioned that I am a finance professional, and I remain a finance professional. I work in a niche area that is exploding, which is a sustainability finance. And and why does it why is it exploding? It's exploding because investors who are providers of capital know that sustainability will help them understanding the sustainability factors of the borrower for the company that they invest in will help them to manage risks, right? So it's transparency. Just because you don't talk about something doesn't mean it's not there, right? So this discussion of sustainability is putting a name to something that's always been there, just nobody was paying attention to it, right? So now, a, 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 as our sophistication as investors a, grows, we are able to identify, measure, monitor, and manage these factors, right? And as a so sustainability and finance are together because sustainability is a risk factor that needs to be managed, right? So it needs to be understood, quantified, and managed, right? Yeah. Hedged to the extent that it's possible or simply managed, right? If you're, if, just because you don't know something exists doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah, absolutely. I agree 100% with this. And one of the things that we, we say all the time in A Planet is that like maybe like in 1929 with the, with the crack of the, stock market in 1929 one of the things that caused that was that there were so many different ways of approaching your finances and there were there was not like no norm and companies were doing it their own way actually investors couldn't assess if a, if a company was actually performing good or not so with that and the with the lack of information with the lack of data the lack also of like um how, how to how to say it? the lack of standardization standards uh, yeah standards mm-hmm. with, with the lack of standards for for measuring your finance performance at the end of the day the economy went downwards you know and and I think right now we're, we're seeing something quite similar with sustainability because there are a lot of ESG new risks associated to the company performance and that's why they really need to incorporate not only the finance uh, criteria that they've been doing for like over a, a century but now they need to do it like in a more professional way with sustainability also. A, a securities law so the work the, the the laws that protect investors a when, when a, a investor whether it's a corporation or an individual buys on a stock exchange or a publicly traded market a, a bond or an or equity a, a, or stock right it, you are protected by the securities laws of that country, right? One very important law is insider trading, right? So what is insider trading? Insider trading is when some people know some information, but other people don't. And that's considered to be unfair, right? So no one, no one questions that, okay? It, sustainability information it can move the price of a bond a share, right? And because that information, an investor has a right to know it, to to know this information, because it can affect the price of of, of the bond, right? Or the price of the equity, right? So any information that an investor might use to make an investment decision, and what is an investment decision? Buy, sell, or hold, okay? I decide to hold something or I decide not to, right? So a, 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 any piece of mater- material information that could affect the price of a stock, a, a stock or bond 
must be disclosed under law. Okay, so that, that's the way the law has always been, but no one until the recent years a, started talking about sustainability factors falling within this larger a, concept of insider trading, right? So insider trading and transparency in markets, right? So a, this sustainab the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, SASB, was founded about 12 years ago to help companies know what information they needed to disclose, okay? Because there isn't a law about it, right? But they were at risk of violating securities laws if they weren't making this information available to all investors at the same time in a way that was easy for them to, and it was easy for an investor to find and understand and evaluate, right? So SASB was born to set standards for sustainability disclosures in the United States. In Europe, the GRI standards came from a different angle but have the same objective. Yeah, with, with that approach, I mean, yeah, in JIRA and SASB and all of this, what, what do you think that should happen? Because eventually, I, I mean, I know that in accounting you have, you have uh, the different methods of, of accounting in, in different countries, and I just forget, forgot the, the, the names. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but when, you, when you have like these different standards in companies and, and investors can't compare, you know, like two, two different companies because they are reporting to two different mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. What do, you th what do you think that should happen? And, and not, not also that what should happen, but what do you think that's going to happen? Because uh, it's not like GRI or SASB or Kings. There's a lot of companies who just report in with their own methodology. Mm -hmm. So I see this as a huge risk, but what are companies doing? What right. are So uh, in November at the COP in Glasgow, the International Sustainability Standards Board was announced. And the first thing that it did was, uh, or it was announced, its creation, and that it would uh, uh, bring under its wing uh, SASB and TCFD, which is this task force for a uh, carbon reporting for financials, financial disclosures. Um, uh, the, the objective of the ISSB is to establish a global baseline for sustainability disclosures. Precisely for the reasons that you just said. In some countries, uh, there's one set of standards that might even be legally obligatory. In other countries, there are no standards at all. And uh, so you have a, a sort of uh, a, a wide range of reporting styles, which is not easy for an investor to, to understand, right? So... The, the point of uh, the formation of ISSB is to establish a global baseline minimum disclosures that all jurisdictions it can agree on. And from there, it may be that certain jurisdictions have some concerns that need to be built upon that. But um, the, the, the attempt right now is, is to establish this minimum baseline globally. And, and there is broad consensus for that. The, the, uh, uh, you know, part of the way markets work is, is, is what's called market consensus. And uh, investors demand transparency on or consensus practice. And when they don't find that, they just don't invest, right? So uh, issuers need to meet the expectations of their investors, whether it's by law or just because all the investors expect it to be done that way, right? So, so they're, they're, that becomes soft law. Either yeah. you meet demand, uh, the demands of your investors or they don't buy your paper. Yeah, they, you don't get the money. This is, this is something that is not only in the best interest of the investors, it's also in the best interest of companies because uh, as long as they see, and we, we've discussed like global markets and stock exchange, so you can think about this as huge companies but with the for the SMBs it's also super important because right now in in the in the midst of the 
inflationary scenario that we have now and money is getting more expensive by the day, getting access to sustainable loans, sustainable link bonds that help you get money, like get cheaper money, mm -hmm. it's... It has to be in the in the front page of every CEO right mm -hmm. now. I mean, mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. to you need to lower your whack. So right. so it's super important for you to to be to invest in sustainability to get even like cheaper money. I, right. I think this is something super important. It, it, absolutely, this is a, a, a trend that is front of mind to a, to I think all corporate corporations that need to access. A, a, capital from third parties. So if, you know, here in Europe, where we have a, a regulatory framework that is robust and quite clear about what is a sustainable objective, what, what does Europe consider sustainability? Well, it's actually written in laws, right? Or a, a, and there is an incentive for money to go towards these a European sustainability objectives, right? So Europe has worked and is working on a framework for sustainable finance, right? And, 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 and part of it is first defining what is sustainable, and the second is a giving incentives to the lenders a, or providers of capital to assume those risks, right? So you're lending capital for these sustainable objectives a, 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 but the, the, still the company needs to repay you, right? Or they need to be profitable in their in this uh, economic activity that is defined as sustainable, right? So um, a, a, there are clear, it's clear what is a sustainable objective. It's clear the markets have set soft law not a law yeah. it's but it's uh it's, it's the market consensus on what is a sustainable bond right a sustainable bond there the, the green bond principles exist a uh, and the financial participants market participants a uh, all abide by them a lot are aligned with that so a uh, that means an investor is not going to buy a bond that calls itself a green bond if it's not actually aligned with the principles and the same with the sustainability linked loan principles. A bank lends money to a company. It might be syndicated among a group of banks, but this it's more of a bilateral private agreement. In the public bond markets, it's very important that the bonds be structured like a commodity. Bonds are freely tradable because they are, are, are easy to understand, right? So they are the key in, in both these uh, lo loans and bonds is key performance indicators on sustainability performance. Without the key performance indicators uh, that uh, standardized key performance indicators, right, then it, there's no way for an investor to, to, to value the relative risk reward from a sustainability standpoint a compare one bond to another, right? Mm -hmm. And so that is a, an investor necessity. And because investors need that, they will quickly, you will quickly start to see bonds trading a, on KPIs. Just like they trade on a financial ratios, yeah. a, you, will, you will begin to see that. And, and you know, it, it, it will be ratios, probably the key ones will be emissions ratios, emissions intensity, um, uh, but 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 I don't think that we are very far from seeing bonds. Well, climate bonds. They talk about climate bonds, right? No, so. I mean right now in the UK, for example, a lot of the, the companies that we're having conversations with, they they are they are super interested in everything that has to be with emissions and and with controlling them and like you know, so these companies eventually will get into the public markets. They will meet bonds. And those will be traded, like regarding emission KPIs. This is this is like opening a whole new scene for not only for finance but also for sustainability professionals. And this is something that I was I was seeing like maybe two or three weeks ago, 
uh, that people are talking about like this new like 2.0 ESG professional because maybe a couple of years ago they were more like uh, guided towards a uh, social and maybe environmental you know like this type of impact but now it's like getting even more professional and people who knows about sustainability they also should know about finance because they are merging and I, I don't know this is a hypothesis that I have and and it's like I think sustainability eventually is going to merge into finance maybe in the future I don't know this, this is something that that, that I see and maybe maybe it's also because I, I, I have a financial background that I, that I think that everything goes towards that but but, but I see it what do you think about it? I, uh, sustainability risk is credit risk. You know that the period end of story. You know you're, the sustainability factors. Uh, I, I said at the beginning. You know banks lend money. Uh, take risk to make money. Right? Well, you lend money. That's a risk that they can pay you back, right? Yeah. So uh, and, and what what depends on whether a company can pay you back, right? It's cash flow generation. Period end of story. So uh, anything that's going to help a company to grow its revenues to uh, reduce its expenses, to reduce its risks, is relevant to a financial investor, to a credit professional, to uh, someone who's investing in the shares of that company, right? It's, it's inseparable. But what's the difference is that it's only now becoming identified and slowly working its way into the mainstream. It's been on the fringe. It's been on the fringe for a long, long time. Yeah. Now. There's actually sustainability standards. Those didn't exist before, right? There's sustainability standards, and there's companies are starting to understand it, starting to look for the data to be able to report it. In some countries, it's obligatory to report that information. In other countries, it's not. So, so that means that we're at the beginning. You know, this the, 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 this data is not universal. It's not universal. It's emerging data, right? So, emerging data means that investors, some investors are very sophisticated and highly sensitive to this is very important to them. Others uh, are, are trying to understand it, right? Uh, in 10 years, we won't be having this conversation. In 10 years, this will be part of a credit analysis uh, or a financial analysis, a corporate valuation. It, it will just be another factor that's included and, and they'll teach it at business school and it won't be there won't be talks about it. <laughs> yeah. It will be yeah. evident. It will be evident, yeah. And this opens like a challenge for companies to collect their information and to actually like to, to be able to, to to audit this information because one of the things that we were discussing before we went live was there's a lot of companies, even big companies, that are collecting all of this information through spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And it's no way to audit those this information. So this is one of the things that like are the key challenges that companies have uh, right now is to start professionalizing not only the sustainability expert uh, profile but also like the processes that they have into collecting all of this information. What do you see that your clients are doing regarding to this? Are there are there like still in an early stage or they're more mature? Well, we, we have a little bit of everything, right? So uh, our clients uh, tend to be smaller companies. Uh, the smaller companies, also because the volume of data that they need to manage is, they consider it to be manageable. It's They find it more manageable to do it on an Excel sheet when there's a small company than to go out and hire an external provider and have to do all the onboarding for that. They, they do, depending on the scale of the company, it's reasonable. Now, now there's other companies that might, might have subsidiaries uh, all over the world or lots of offices, uh, even in one country, right? Every single office has data that needs to be aggregated for corporate reporting, right? So uh, just like there is financial auditable trail and any auditor is going to expect that and demand it before they sign off on it, uh, that, that is beginning to be the case with sustainability-related information, right? And uh, uh, what you know, I, I, I believe that it will be the auditor or the obligatory, the, the, the legal obligation for sustainability disclosures to be verified by a third party. 
that will force a, a, a migration onto digitalized platforms, right? You know, go paperless. A going paperless a, 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 is, is a guarantee to, to a, that uh, it reduces errors and it, a, it increases the, a, the data trail, right? So everyone, the, the company itself, as well as the user of that data, a third party user of that data can be, can be a, a tranquil that, that, that the information that they're using is reliable. Yeah, this is, this is super important, you know, like being able to trace every step that your data has before they achieve like the agree on. We, we agree that this is our information, but we can check and double check in the past what happened. But there's always going to be errors, right? You know, corporations restate their earnings, okay? Big yeah. corporations sometimes restate their earnings. A, a international accounting standards, there are international accounting standards boards that all the time are, are adjusting calculation methodologies, right? And sometimes they, for, by, by changing, the, um, adjusting how certain concepts are calculated, companies will have to go back and restate their earnings because the accounting standard changed, right? Mm -hmm. So in accounting, nobody thinks twice about this. It's a pain in the butt. Nobody likes it. It's a headache. A, but, but, but investors accept that, a, accept the reality that even financial numbers sometimes change, yeah. right? They change because the standard that says how you measure change, That's right? Changed, but yeah. it's the standard itself that changed, not the company's numbers, unless the company made a mistake, which sometimes happens too, right? So, so, a, but but when that happens, the companies go forward and say we've readjusted, we've adjusted our our, our a prior year's earnings to take into account of X, right? And a, there's a this this. this and depending uh, uh, how grave the error was, what what what, or the, the, uh, that may not even change the stock price. It's, it's it's something that's commonplace, right? So that is little by little as sustainability data becomes normalized, accepted, uh, accepted, reliable because it's verified that everyone's using the same standard and calculates things the same way. It will become a non-event. Yeah, and one of the one of the things that I was I was thinking the other day is, at the end of the day, with sustainability merging into finance and and becoming a part of corporate uh, performance, being sustainable in excelling at your sustainability performance is going to be integrated into financial performance. I, I mean, one, last year we had a conversation with with uh, Alex Adman, a professor. At in the UK, and he was his thesis was sustainability means profit, and and he said if a company is sustainable and they can incorporate all of these um, criteria into their operations, at the end of the day, there's a higher chance that they are going to be more profitable than if they not. What do you think about this? Absolutely, <laughs> I I 100% believe that. I think that once again, sustainability offers opportunities, new bit lines of business where a, the, 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 the public, uh, the, the, a, every day are more conscious as buyers of services and products that we consider to be friendly or not, not, not damaging to people or the planet. So there is a huge shift in consumer behavior towards products and services that we consider to be sustainable. Right, so so that's a line of business that you can either position yourself to capture or lose. Right, if you if your product is not considered to be sustainable, and you either don't communicate or it, or you don't change to become consumed, you will lose your clients. Right, so so that so your revenues will shrink or they can grow. Right, so, and you can decide that as a, that that's business strategy one on one. You know, we're not we're not talking anything different here, right? A, expenses a, a, to to the extent that you're able to reduce your expenses a, by sustainably managing your supply chain. Now, some people must, might say, "Oh, by sustainably managing my supply chain, my expenses are going to go up." 
uh, because the uh, products that are sustainable cost more. Well, yes and no, because what your overall costs are not only a is stability in your supply chain, right? So s sustainable products, sustainable, they're stable, right? So uh, to the extent that you can rely on renewable sources of energy, you're not as a, you, you, you're, you are lessening your exposure to supply shocks, right? And a supply shock puts business continuity at risk. Yeah. If your business goes, can't operate, then your clients are a, going to have to look for someone else that is operating, right? Or a, maybe when you come back online, they decide to find another provider, right? So, so reputation risk, brand, a, brand management, you're managing your corporate reputation by managing your ability to preserve business continuity, your resilience as a business, in in many in many ways, a depends on a revenue revenue streams of revenues and input costs. If you're able to eliminate volatility there or reduce the volatility, to a and volatility is not only price, it's availability, right? So, a sustainability is a way to future-proof a business. This is another key concept that you just said here that I found super powerful, and it's through sustainability you can reduce volatility. And, and it's like, wow, I mean, I mean this, is, this is a great way to, to understand, like from a, from a business perspective, how you can grow your business because if you have like a lower delta, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for you to even to project and to try to understand where you're going to be one, two, three, or four years from now if you, if you manage to have less volatility in your... When you reduce volatility in your business, you lower your whack, yeah. right? Because yeah. the risk, your risk profile has, has fallen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Wow. This, I mean, there, there's a lot of like, concepts here that I have never thought of, and, and I think they're quite, quite great. Well, uh, we, we, we've discussed sustainable link bonds, financing opportunities, but there's, I think there's a lot of people who might not know exactly wh what they are. So what are sustainable link bonds, how companies uh, structure that, and, I mean, financial institutions, and how uh, a small or medium business can benefit from that? Wh what, what is like the, the process and how a company can lower their whack with, right. with that? So uh, the, 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 the sustainability-linked bond market and the sustainability-linked loan market, while they're similar, they're separate. Uh, in the bond market, that, pr that the uh, focus is on use of proceeds. So when a company goes to the bond market to borrow money from investors, uh, for a green bond, it would have to offer to investors a bond is a contract. It's, I'll borrow your money and I'll pay you back uh, within a, on a certain date. And I'll, in the meantime, I'm going to pay you a certain rate, rate of interest. And also, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with your money, right? So in a, in a green bond, it, there is a green framework that actually governs the use of proceeds, right? So I would issue a 100 million euro bond. I receive 100 million euros. What am I going to do with it in the bond contract? Uh, there is a framework that ensures a, that the investor, it's a guarantee to the investor that the money is going to be used as I promised it would, right? Again, here we are in Europe, a green, a green bond a, should be used for sustainability objectives as listed under the taxonomy, a, which are, are very, quite wide range of possibilities. But, but let's pick one, right? It could be CapEx necessary to reduce my carbon emissions by a updating a, all the engines that I use in my in my in my uh, in my factory right so that they're that they're more efficient and I install some filters and I make all sorts of transformations and I need 100 million euros to be able to do that in all my factories right a, this money will be used for that that and only that. And that is, this contract 
uh, the bond agreement, the, uh, the, uh, is the issuing mem uh, is uh, the memorandum, right, uh, actually is the guarantee to the investor that the money will be used for sustainable purposes and no, no, no others, right? Uh, that's verified annually by the auditors as well. There's a actually a separate chain that the money goes through that is audited, right? So that's, uh, that is in a very simple description how a green bond is issued. And you're right, in investors, investors will accept a lower yield on those bonds. It not, it's not huge, the difference, but on 100 million, bond, 100 million euros that maybe you're borrowing for five or seven years, it adds up, yeah. right? So, so there is a huge investor demand for a well-structured, and well-structured is the important point there, a, a well-structured green bonds where the, the, the company also on an annual basis is reporting certain data so that you also can see that their emissions are falling, right? This CapEx has been invested and, and actually their emissions are falling, right? So everybody, it's, 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 it's a mutually beneficial system, right? A sustainability linked loan a, it, it is the same situation, but instead of a, a, a public market investors, you have the, bot, the banks themselves that are lending the money. And, and they're, a, because the companies are generally smaller, they uh, work with the company to, a, 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 sometimes it could be use of proceeds, as I explained, but generally it's a linking the interest rate to improvements on certain sustainability factors. So I, I mentioned before this advertising agency that if they are considering a actually linking part of the loan to growth in green advertising, right? So green advertising, a, you know, they will have to decide, but if they think that in the, over the next five years, it can be become 30% of revenues from zero, because right now it's zero, a, the bank loves that, right? So that's that's a new source of revenues. So they're not going to stop their other clients. This is just new growth, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is quite great. I, I mean, and and it's and it's good that companies can set goals to become more sustainable. And at the end of the day, is what you said, sustainability KPIs. So it's super important for companies to be able to measure what they say that they're going to do mm -hmm. because they need to report it and this information has to be audited. Right, exactly, exactly. So that, that, that's, that's very important, right? So both with the bonds, so when, you're, when you issue bonds, obviously you have audited reports that are available publicly. A, in private companies that borrow money from, from banks, a, the bank it demands a audited financial, a financial reports and audited a verification of performance on the KPIs, right? So that's... Uh, additional um, audit obligation requirement, right? That, 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 the, that the, audit, the company's auditor just adds that on to their annual exercise, but they need to be able to verify, right? So that the, uh, how data is captured, how it is measured, how it is verified is of vital importance to the auditor who has to verify using, you know, they sign professionally that these that this information is, is correct and the bank that relies on that, right? So, uh, you know, the, the, taken to its extreme, uh, the financial system it depends upon a reliable data, whether it's sustainability data or financial data. Yeah. And, 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 and these guarantees are built into the system with the audit profession. Wow. It's been amazing to have you here. Just one question before you before you go. We're, we're starting this A talk, so who would you like to see here? This I didn't tell you that I was gonna ask. Well that's interesting. Uh, Andres, I think uh, I think um, big institutional investors, a big institutional investor explaining how they use this data and how, how, what happens when they don't find the data and whether it's really affecting their investment decisions 
uh, the price relative value, how they decide whether to buy or hold. Uh, I think that that could be very interesting. Okay, that's perfect. If you have a name in mind, I'll share, share with you with later. You. Yeah, because because I mean we're creating this to open a space for people to understand about ESG in all of its forms, and and it's it's amazing to have you here. I've learned a lot today, and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much for thank you for us. inviting me, Andres. My pleasure. Bye bye. <laughs>